Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to discuss function. Now, what is a function? When two quantities, x and y, are related so that for some range of values of x, the value of y is determined by that of x, we say that y is a function of x. And the notation for this one is y equals f of x, wherein y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. So, say for example, that we are given here a circle, right? So, if we're going to draw a circle here, and then this circle has a radius, and the radius of this circle is equal to r, the circumference of the circle is equal to 2 pi r. Now, for every value of r, provided that r is greater than 0, there is a corresponding value of a circumference. Alright? So, the, the value of the circumference of this circle is dependent on the value of the radius. That's why c in here is the dependent variable and r is the independent variable. Alright? Now, in this particular relationship, c is a function of r or the circumference is a function of the radius provided that r is greater than zero in solving problems involving function say for example we are given here a function of x and the expression of f of x is x squared plus 2x plus 2 if we are required to determine f of 2, for example, we're just going to replace x with the argument of the unknown. So if we are, if we are going to solve for f of 2, we're just going to replace all x with 2. So this will become 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 2 and you can solve for f of 2. So whatever the argument in here, we're just going to replace x with that argument and then we're just going to simplify uh, the given uh, function, right? So, f of 2 would now be 2 squared plus 2 multiplied by 2 plus 2. So, this will now be equal to 4 because 2 squared is equal to 4 and then plus 2 times the 4 plus 2. So, that's equal to 10. This is now f of Right? So, if this is another variable or if this is another expression, then we can, uh, we, we're going to replace x with expression. So, for this example here, c equals 2 pi r. So, if we're going to, uh, if we're going to solve, say for example, for f of x, then we're just going to replace r with x. Right? Or if f of x plus r, we're going to replace r with x plus r, right? So that is how or that's how we solve problems involving functions. So here is an example of a function. Say that we are given a function of x which is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 1. Find letter a, the function of a, letter b, the function of 2, and letter C, the function of x plus h. So to solve this problem, we're just going to replace x with the given argument. So say for example, the given argument is a, we're going to replace x with a. If the, uh, if the given argument is 2, we're going to replace x with 2. And if the given argument is x plus h, we're going to replace all x with x plus h. And then if uh, necessary, we are going to simplify the answer. So solving for this problem for letter a, the function of a will now be equal to a squared minus 3a minus 1. This is already the simplest form of the function of a, so this would now be our answer for this item. For letter b, the function of 2. So replacing x with 2, we have 2 squared minus 3 multiplied by 2 minus 1, and this would now be equal to 4 minus 6 minus 1, so basically f of 2 now be equal to 4 minus 6 that is negative 2 minus 1 which is equal to negative 3 and for letter c 
the function of x plus h. So if we're going to replace all values of x with x plus h, we now have x plus h quantity squared minus 3 multiplied by x plus h minus 1. And if we're going to simplify this one, we have, or if we're going to expand x plus h, we have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And if we're going to distribute negative 3, uh, on, on this group we have negative 3x minus 3h minus 1. So we cannot simplify this any further, therefore this will now be our final answer. In this problem, we are given g as a function of y, which is equal to cosine of 2y minus 2 sine of y. Find letter a, the g of pi, letter b, g of pi over 2, letter c, g of 0, and letter d, g of x plus g of negative x. So in solving for letter a, we're just going to replace y with pi. So g of pi is now equal to cosine of 2 pi minus 2 sine of pi. Now, cosine of 2 pi, uh, this, this is in region measure, so this is basically 360 degrees, and cosine of 360 degrees is actually equal to 1. And 2 sine of pi, pi is equivalent to 180 degrees, so 2 sine of 180 degrees, this is equal to 0. So this is 1 minus 0, or g of pi is equal to 1. For letter B, we have g of pi over 2. So g of pi over 2, this is now equal to cosine of 2 multiplied by pi over 2 minus 2 sine of pi over 2. So if we're going to look at the given, we just uh, replaced y with pi over 2. And if we're going to simplify this one or evaluate this one, we have cosine of pi minus 2 sine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi is actually cosine of 180 degrees and that will give us negative 1. And then sine of pi over 2 which is sine of 90 degrees this is minus 2 multiplied by 1 because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. And if we're going to uh, evaluate this one or simplify this one we have negative 1 minus, neg uh, minus 2 so g of pi over 2 is equal to negative 3. Right, so for letter C, we have g of 0, so this would now be equal to cosine of 2 multiplied by 0 minus 2 sine of 0. We're just going to replace y, right, so we're just going to replace y with zeros. So this is now equal to Cosine of 2 times 0 is basically cosine of 0, and cosine of 0 is equal to 1. Minus 2 sine of 0, is e uh, that is uh, 0, so g of 0 is equal to 1. And lastly, we have g of x plus g of negative x. So, if we're going to replace uh, y with x and then y with negative x, and then if we're going to uh, add the resulting function, we will now have, uh, this would now be equal to cosine of 2 multiplied by x minus 2 sine of x, right? So this is g of x plus, this would now be cosine of 2 multiplied by negative x minus 2 sine of negative x. Right, so this is g of negative x. So let me just rewrite this one. So we have cosine of 2x minus 2 sine of x plus uh, cosine of 2 negative x is uh, actually equal to cosine of 2x and then 2, so we're going to have minus 2 sine of negative x is equal to negative 2 sine of x. So if we're going to simplify this one, we'll now add uh, the, the 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 answer would now be equal to two cosine of two x because negative sine of x minus negative two sine of x 
this will basically cancel out so this is now the evaluation of g of x plus g of negative x so another example that we have here is uh, the uh, given function of b equals b minus b squared all over 1 plus b squared and we're going to find the function of 0 the function of 1 half and the function of tangent of x so for letter a if we're going to solve for the function of 0 this is now equal to 0 minus 0 squared all over 1 plus 0 squared so 0 uh, divided by any number that will result to 0 so this is the function of 0 for this given function now for letter b we have the function of 1 half so this is now equal to 1 half minus 1 half quantity squared all over 1 plus 1 half quantity squared so you can use your calculator to simplify this one but if we're going to uh, make use of the conventional way of evaluating this we have 1 half minus 1 fourth all over 1 plus 1 fourth and this is actually equal to right so the LCD of the numerator is equal to 4 and then 4 divided by 2 so that's 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2 times 1 so that's equal to 2 plus 4 divided by 4 times 1 so that's equal to 1 all over 1 plus 1 fourth that's basically 4 uh, the numerator would now be equal to 5 so 4 and 4 will cancel out because common uh, these are common denominators of both numerator and uh, the denominator so the resulting answer would now be equal to 3 over 5 this is now the function of 1 half for the given function b minus b squared all over 1 plus b squared and for letter C, we're going to solve for the function of tangent of x. If we're going to replace uh, B with tangent of x, we'll be having tangent of x minus tangent squared of x all over 1 plus tangent squared of x. So, if we're going to simplify this one and we're going to change tangent of x to sine of x uh, over cosine of x because uh, tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x uh, this would now be equal to sine of x over cosine of x minus sine squared of x all over cosine squared of x all over so that's 1 plus sine squared of x over cosine squared of x x right so this would now be equal to the numerator the lcd of the numerator so the lcd of the numerator is cosine squared of x so if we're going to divide cosine squared with cosine we'll be having cosine of x multiplied by sine of x so that would be sine of x cosine of x minus cosine squared of x divided by cosine squared of x that is equal to 1 times sine squared of x so that is sine squared of x all over right so we have the lcd of the denominator is also cosine squared of x and this would now be uh, cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x so if we're going to combine these two fractions the resulting fraction would be cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x. Now, cosine squared of x will cancel out with cosine squared of x here. Thus, leaving us sine of x cosine of x minus sine squared of x. All over, we have cosine squared of x, right? So, if, if we're going to simplify cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, we have an identity here. Uh, which is actually equal to 1. So cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is actually equal to 1. That is an identity. So since the denominator is already equal to 1, so we now have sine of uh, x cosine of x minus sine squared of x. 
So if we're going to bring out sine of x, we'll be having cosine of x minus sine of x. So this is now the function of tangent of x expressed in sine and cosine of x. Right? Right. So given a function of x which is equal to cosine of x, we're going to find the function of pi minus y. So if we're going to change or replace x with pi minus y, we have, right, so let me just write f of pi minus y, that would now be equal to cosine of pi minus y. Now for this problem, we're going to use uh, the identity for, uh, or the trigonometric identity for sum or difference of two angles since we have a uh, difference of two angles for a particular trigonometric function. So, uh, if we're just going to recall our trigonometry, uh, cosine of A plus B, that is actually equal to cosine of A, cosine of B, minus sine of A, sine of B. And if that is cosine of A minus B, so that would now be equal to cosine of A, cosine of B, plus sine of A, sine of B. So if we are going to, let me just change the color of my pen. So if we are going to apply this principle on this given expression, we'll now have cosine of A, which is cosine of pi, multiplied by cosine of B, plus sine of a which is pi and then we have sine of b because in here a is pi and b is y and if we're going to simplify this one we'll, we now have cosine of pi which is cosine of 180 degrees that is equal to negative 1 cosine of b plus sine of pi which is equal to 0 multiplied by sine of b that is equal that's basically equal to 0 so the answer for f of pi minus y, that is now equal to negative cosine of b. Alright, so let's have another uh, example. Here, so we are given a function of x which is equal to tangent of x. Show that the function of x plus y minus f of x equals second squared of x tangent of y all over 1 minus tangent of x tangent of y. So basically, we're going to have our proving identities in this problem. So if we're going to evaluate uh, this expression, we have function of x plus y is actually equal to tangent of x plus y. And tangent of x plus y, so since this is a uh, sum of two angles, a trigonometric functions of sum of two angles, we have an identity for that one. And we're going to use the identity tangent, all right? So the underlying principle here would be tangent of A plus B, that's equal to tangent of A plus tangent of B all over 1 minus tangent of A tangent of B. And since our a here is x and our b here is y. f of x plus y, our tangent of x plus y is equal to tangent of x plus tangent of y all over 1 minus tangent of x multiplied by tangent of y. And, right, so the function of x is basically the given one, right? So this is now the function of x. So if we're going to get f so f of x plus y minus f of x that is now equal to tangent of x plus tangent of y all over 1 minus tangent of x tangent of y minus f of x which is tangent of x. So if we're going to combine these two terms, right? So if we're going to combine these two terms, the LCD would be 
1 minus tangent of x tangent of y. So, this would now be tangent of x plus tangent of y minus tangent of x multiplied by 1 minus tangent of x tangent of Okay, so if we're going to simplify the numerator here, we have tangent of x plus tangent of y minus tangent of x plus tangent squared of x tangent of y all over 1 minus tangent of x tangent of y. So tangent of x minus tangent of x, this will cancel out. This would now be equal to tangent of y plus tangent squared of x tangent of y all over 1 minus tangent of x tangent of y. Now, you will notice that tangent of y is a common factor of uh, the two terms in the numerator. So, we can bring it out giving us tangent of y multiplied by 1 plus tangent squared of x all over 1 minus tangent of x tangent of y. So here we have a Pythagorean identity and 1 plus tangent squared of x this is actually equal to second squared of x. So if 1 plus tangent squared of x is equal to second squared of x therefore we can write uh, this expression as tangent of y second squared of x all over 1 minus tangent of x tangent of y. And if we're going to notice, the resulting expression is now actually equal to this one. So we, 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 we have already proven that the function of x plus y minus f of x is actually equal to tangent of y second squared of x or second squared x all over 1 minus tangent of x multiplied by tangent of y. 